May God bless the DAV, and may God bless America. Thank you. The start of our 95th year last August began with your selection of our national officers, highlighted by the election of National Commander Moses McIntosh. The Air Force and Army veteran of Desert Shield and Desert Storm has brought that necessary blend of strength and charisma to this position, leading our organization throughout what turned into a challenging year for veterans advocacy. A man of the people, Commander McIntosh has worked tirelessly to rally our membership's grassroots support around our top legislative priorities and to bring veterans' causes to the forefront of the American conscience. During February's Midwinter Conference, DAV and DAV Auxiliary members reignited the flame of Operation Keep the Promise by meeting with lawmakers and working aggressively to protect our benefits and ensure the continued strength of our organization. National Commander McIntosh then delivered his testimony before the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committees calling for a properly funded, robust VA health care system in the face of calls to dismantle the VA. While we know that many problems still exist in VA, this system is our greatest hope of keeping our promise to care for those who serve and their families. Despite the continuing challenges facing VA, DAV had another productive year advocating for improved health care services and benefits for ill and injured veterans. Our framework for health care reform released last November would improve access to VA care while creating new opportunities for veterans who would otherwise have to wait too long or travel too far. VA, Congress, and most recently the Commission on Care have adopted many of DAV's ideas and recommendations, and we are confident thanks to the continued support of our members around the country, the debate over the future of veterans health care is moving in the right direction. Our fully developed appeals legislation passed the House in February, was approved by the Senate Committee in May, and could be signed into law before the end of the year. Our legislation to expand caregiver assistance to veterans of all eras was approved by the Senate Committee in May, and the Female Veterans Suicide Prevention Act, based on a recommendation from our landmark Women Veterans Report, was signed into law in July. Despite the deteriorating political climate in Washington, our legislative team continues looking for opportunities to pass legislation that keeps the promise to the men and women who serve. DAV Service Department continues to live up to the legacy of being the best in the business. Our mobile service offices visited 879 sites in 2015 and interviewed more than 17,000 claimants. Our transition service officers filed more than 18,000 claims last year and helped ensure nearly 34,000 transitioning veterans were aware of their earned benefits. Between all 3,920 county, chapter, department, transition, and national service officers, DAV helped veterans and family members obtain more than $4 billion in new and retroactive benefits. Additionally, we've adopted a new state-of-the-art interactive training platform to keep our national service officers up to date on all things related to benefits and compensation. The service department also continued making an impact with its disaster relief program by supplying nearly 800 drafts and supply kits, totaling more than $330,000. This year, natural disasters once again devastated communities from Georgia to California and Alabama to Michigan, but dedicated DAV members were there to step in and aid their fellow veterans on the ground. Our membership department has once again made tremendous strides in meeting recruiting goals set forth for the year by reaching a new landmark. DAV now has a sustained membership of 1.3 million voices representing our cause. As we again exceeded our national objectives, it's clear our members and service officers have been aggressively working to ensure continued strength for our organization. For 2015, DAV devoted $44.5 million to various voluntary service initiatives. This year, DAV's Transportation Network volunteers traveled more than 24.7 million miles, providing more than 700,000 free rides and donated nearly 1.7 million hours, a value to taxpayers that is equivalent to more than $38 million. DAV's newest initiative, our National Employment Program, has more than doubled in scale since it was established in June 2014. In a short time, DAV has become one of, 
if not the most prolific charity in terms of connecting veterans with employers through this initiative. The department is executing a busy schedule of more than 60 all-veteran career fairs across the nation this year, offering military personnel, veterans, and spouses the opportunity to directly engage with employers who know the value of hiring those who served. Since this initiative began two years ago, our career fairs have drawn in nearly 50,000 job seekers with an average of 60 exhibitors per event and, most impressively, roughly 130 job offers per event. Additionally, DAV is creating an opportunity for veterans to connect with employers through virtual career fairs. DAV will facilitate 10 virtual career fairs this year, with four of the events being devoted exclusively to disabled veterans. DAV has also launched the 10K DAV Hiring Challenge to ensure at least 10,000 disabled veterans attain meaningful employment by the end of 2018. The DAV Charitable Service Trust supports dozens of unique organizations that provide injured and ill veterans things like rehabilitative and emotional therapy, transition assistance, employment support, as well as emergency relief funding. In 2015, the Trust issued more than $6.3 million in grants to support these kinds of programs and services. DAV again co-hosted the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic in Snowmass, Colorado. This year, 15 of the presenting sponsors were DAV entities. Among the participants are our 2016 DAV Freedom Award recipient, Army veteran Mariella Malin, stood out as a shining example of how adaptive winter sports can make a difference in the lives and recoveries of participants. Mariella suffered a traumatic brain injury, collapsed lung, severed liver, and dislocated hip after being struck by a hit and run vehicle in Kuwait. The clinic has been a life-changing experience for Mariella, and she plans on returning in the years to come with the same positive outlook, unbeatable spirit, and determination to succeed. We were very excited to launch our inaugural DAB 5K event in Atlanta this year. We had a wonderful turnout with over 1,500 participants. The DAB 5K initiative is ramping up for this coming Veterans Day weekend by expanding to three new locations. This year, in addition to races in downtown Cincinnati and Atlanta, DAV will be hosting our Run to Honor Veterans in Boston, Newport News, and Tulsa. With additional support from the DAV Departments of Massachusetts, Virginia, and Oklahoma, we're anticipating a phenomenal turnout for the series, giving DAV significant outreach opportunities and a chance to raise awareness about our services to veterans. DAV has continued expanding its presence in the social sphere, topping 1.3 million fans on Facebook and expanding our name and message across social media platforms like Twitter and Periscope. Leading up to Veterans Day, DAV relaunched its online Thank a Vet digital campaign that helped thousands create customized videos honoring the veterans in their lives, and thanks in part to some help from country superstar Reba McIntyre, reached millions of people through social networks. And don't forget to share it on social media using the hashtag ThankAvet. DAV's continued partnership with the History Channel helped in this endeavor as well, as the network donated a dollar to DAV for each Veterans Day tweet sent using the ThankAvet hashtag. Mike Wolf and the rest of the network's American Pickers crew even produced a series of shareable videos highlighting the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial and the mission of DAV. DAV helps more than one million veterans every year in life-changing ways. The work that they're doing is not only inspirational to veterans, but to everyone in this country. We cannot forget about those who served, and their stories are important to tell. I want to thank you guys both for your service and for being here today and for the work that you guys are doing for DAV. Our pleasure. Well, Mike, we appreciate the opportunity to be part of this on behalf of DAV. It was an honor for both of us to be here today. To learn more about how DAV helps veterans, go to DAV.org. Also leading up to Veterans Day, DAV released the very intense and detailed DAV Veterans Pulse Survey. The survey is the largest, most comprehensive assessment ever taken to reveal how generations of veterans from World War II through post 9-11 view their military experience, benefits, and overall quality of life. DAV again partnered with Phoenix International Raceway during Veterans Day weekend for the DAV 200, honoring America's veterans. 
In partnership with NASCAR, DAV delivered our message of service and support for veterans and their families to a television audience of nearly 1.9 million viewers. DAV's programs and services gained further public attention at various other sporting events this year. DAV members and representatives were honored during halftime events at the Big Ten men's and women's basketball tournaments, as well as the Quick Lane Bowl at Ford Field in Detroit. These partnerships helped shine a brighter spotlight on our organization for those in need of our services. DAV also sponsored the Spartan Weekend, an event aimed at eliminating veteran suicide through peer intervention. Outstanding Disabled Veteran of the Year Bobby Body attended the kickoff in the shadows of the World Trade Center, while past National Commander Bobby Barrera took to the microphone at Fort Belvoir, Virginia to share his own experiences in the battle to not become one of the 20. The weekend culminated with veterans taking the Spartan Pledge at the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial in Washington, where past National Commander and President of the Disabled Veterans Life Memorial Foundation, Dennis Joyner, also shared his experiences and recognized survivors. The pledge is a promise from one veteran to another to not take their life without reaching out to another veteran for help. As always, our friends and allies in the DAV Auxiliary have had a busy year under the guidance of Commander Linda Stake and National Adjutant Pat Kemper. The Auxiliary has not only helped raise funds for youth scholarships, service support programs, Camp Corral, and the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic, but they have continued their unmatched, dedicated service to local community veterans. DAV has continued to gain momentum throughout the last year with a dedicated network of members, volunteers, and supporters working ever vigilantly to keep our organization invigorated with new ideas and fresh opportunities to engage. I'm proud of all we've accomplished over the past year. I'm exceptionally proud of our tremendous DAV and auxiliary community, and I look forward to another year serving side by side with you working together to keep our promises to America's veterans and their families.